Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In a previous podcast tutorial, we discussed how to create a signature animation. I'd like to build off of that and show you how to animate a pen writing the words in After Effects 3D. So I'm opening a project very similar to the one that I used in my signature tutorial. The main differences are that I've made the composition a lot longer. I changed the timing for this signature animation just a little bit. I marked off the start and end points of each section of the signature, and I've imported this picture of a pen. Okay, well, it's not actually a pen, but I'm calling it a pen instead of an artist mechanical pencil doohickey thing, because I don't know what it's called. Look, I borrowed it from an architect who was at my office, and I scanned it because I liked the way it looked. So let's not belabor this and just call it a quote-unquote pen. Okay? Good. Moving on, let's add the pen image into the composition. Then, I'll double click on the pen layer to open a layer window that allows me to access the anchor point directly. As you can see, right now the anchor point is dead center, and I want the anchor point to be at the tip of the pen. That way the pen will rotate and move based on its tip instead of the center. A layer will also scale from its anchor point as well, but we're not going to be doing that during this project. Make sure the view button pull down here is set to anchor point path or you won't be able to do the next step. Let's grab hold of the anchor point marker and move it down to the very tip of our pen. You may need to zoom in for this so that you can get real precision. Once you have the anchor point in position, you can close the layer window. You'll notice that our pen is now positioned on the screen differently with its tip at the center of the screen, and that's because our anchor point determines the layer's position. So if you move a layer's anchor point, the image has to move so that the anchor point can stay exactly where it is in XY coordinate space. Next, let's add a white solid to the background by choosing Layer, New, Solid, and then in the color picker, choose white as the color, and then back in the main solid settings, choose to make it the comp size as well. The size doesn't really matter here because we're going to be scaling it up later as needed, but it's nice to have a good place to start. Hit OK to confirm the creation of a new white solid. Next, let's move the solid layer to the bottom of the stack order. Okay, good. Then, if you aren't already there, move down to the first frame in the timeline. Okay, next, let's copy the first mask shape into the position property of our pen layer. Select the signature layer and hit M to reveal all masks. Select the mask shape for mask 1 and choose Edit, Copy. Then, select the pen layer and if it's not already visible, hit P to reveal the position property. Then select the position property and choose Edit, Paste. As you can see, this pastes a bunch of position keyframes into the pen layer. If you move along in time, you'll see that the pen is moving with the signature. The timing's not perfect, but we'll fix that right now. You may have noticed that the inner keyframes are all roving keyframes. If you're not clear on what roving keyframes are, check out my tutorial podcast that covers these often missed gems and that shows you how to make them yourself. And while you're at it, if you're not clear on how we just got the mask to become a motion path, check out my tutorial on scaling a motion path, which explains all of that as well. Anyway, as I mentioned, I marked off all of the start and finish points for each section of the signature, so let's move our last keyframe to the marker called 1F, which stands for Section 1 Finish. Again, because these are roving keyframes, they will scale in time proportionately. A quick RAM preview, and we can see the word Arnold being written by our pen. Okay. Let's copy the second mask in the same way as the first. So, select Mask 2's mask shape, and then choose Edit, Copy. Then, move down to the marker called 2S for Section 2 Start, and select the position property of our pen, and choose Edit, Paste. Then, as before, move just the last keyframe down to the marker called 2F. A quick RAM preview, and now most of the text is being written out, except for the dash of the T and the dot of the I. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here, so let's just jump forward in time, where I've finished copying and pasting masks into paths. Now for the good stuff. Let's make all of the layers 3D by activating their 3D switch. Next, let's add a camera. Choose Layer, New, Camera. From the preset pulldown, I'm going to use a standard 50mm camera. Also, make sure Enable Depth of Field is turned off. You can use it later if you want, but life will be much easier if it's not on right now. Click OK to confirm. Next, let's add a Null by choosing Layer, New, Null Object. 
Then let's make the null a 3D layer by turning on its 3D layer switch. Then select all the layers except the camera and the null and in the parenting column make them children of the null. Next select the null and hit R to reveal the null's rotation properties. Then set the X orientation to negative 90. As you can see everything seems to disappear. This is because everything is at a perfect right angle from the camera and since all layers are flat they won't be seen. I'll use the camera tools to position the camera properly. You can cycle through the different camera tools by hitting C on your keyboard. Alright, now that I have my camera positioned I'm faced with the problem that the pen is lying flat on its side. Let's select the pen layer and then choose Layer, Transform, Auto Orient and in the Auto Orientation dialog choose Orient Towards Camera. Click OK and you'll see that our pen is now standing upright and facing the camera. Auto orienting towards the camera forces a layer to always face the camera on its z-axis. So if I rotate around, as you can see, the pen always faces the camera, never showing any flatness by revealing its side. While it has a limited range before it seems completely fake, it can help in certain situations. Of course, if you take it too far, you may see some weirdness. I also want to mention that even though auto orientation is not animatable, both orientation and rotation still are. So if you select the pen layer and hit R to reveal the rotation, you'll see that you can make changes to the values here and it affects the pen's orientation towards the camera. I'll just undo that. Okay. Now in the spaces between when the pen is writing the different sections of the name, currently the pen is dragging across the paper which is not natural. When you're writing, you usually lift the pen off of the page before moving on to the next word. So let's do that. Move down in the timeline to write between 1F and 2S, and then with the pen selected, move it up on its Y axis slightly so that it's off the paper. Make sure that the new spatial keyframe is a Bezier keyframe so that the motion is rounder. If it's not, control click on it, or if you're on a Macintosh, command click on it to get a nice rounded motion. Jumping ahead in time as I repeat the process, a quick RAM preview and you can see that I've lifted the pen for each break in the writing and I've animated the pen lifting off the page as well. Next, let's select the white solid and hit S to reveal the scale property and then let's scale it up until it fills the entire screen. Oh, one last thing. In the timeline, turn on motion blur for the composition and the pen layer. A quick RAM preview and it's looking good. The pen is doing what it should. I'm also going to add in lights to this shot along with some shadows. Come on folks, don't just do what I do, make it your own. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.